Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. You are here on the home of the slightly above average ship review. Today we are doing a tech tree spotlight in the penultimate ship in the U.S. destroyer line, the American Tier 7 Tech Tree Destroyer, the Fletcher. In my opinion, you can play the Fletcher as a gunboat or a torpedo boat, but it leans more towards the gunboat. Although I believe for this review we are using the Torpedo Commander, Albert Cleaves. There's a quick look at the teams. We're on Warrior's Path, a relatively new map. Here in World of Warships Legends, I want to go ahead and apologize if I say anything uncouth today. I have a couple of bottles of Anger Erweiss on board. I actually prefer the Browweiss. But beggars can't be choosers. When you're faced with a bottle of Anger, you just buy whatever they have at the store. Now that I digress uh, from what we were supposed to be talking about, we're doing what we do. Domination match. We're heading towards Alpha. And I believe we are top tier in this game. Now, this game isn't really going to illustrate anything other than the Fletcher is a really good destroyer. It can... Throw torpedoes, very long range, 9.2 kilometer base range. It can gunboat because it has five U.S. guns. All right, there we spotted an enemy destroyer who threw up a smoke screen out of fright and terror at the sight of probably the destroyer, or not me, in the destroyer. Warrior's Path is a very unusual map. Over near the Alpha Cap has lots of little rocks. There's an enemy destroyer, a Jervis. And as you can see, really nice accuracy from these U.S. guns. We are piling in the rounds, even though he's breaking and slowing up and doing all sorts of stuff. Mr. Jervis, you are just going to have to throw up a smoke screen because even though I am aiming like I've been drinking all day, the fact is I have not been drinking all day when I recorded this video. I'm just not a good aimer. I have been drinking when, before I recorded this voiceover, though. All right, so we do one of my patented turn and smokes because there are other enemy ships over here. We're going to just throw some torpedoes out. I mean, what could go wrong? And we're going to hang out in our smoke because that's what we do. All right, so back to Warrior's Path. If you look at the mini-map, you can see kind of a V-shape of islands or rocks or obstacles or whatever you want to call them. The open end of the V, very little rocks all over the place. The closed end of the V over near the Charlie Cap, very big rocks. And so I consider the Alpha and Bravo Cap more suited to destroyers then the Charlie Cap, due to the amount of islands, allows you to do a little hide-and-go-seek kind of action. And so whenever you're on this map, if you start in the middle and you don't like the middle, and you're in a destroyer, my advice is to head to Alpha. Especially if you're in a Ruski destroyer, or the Kleber, anything with short-range torpedoes. You can use these islands to your advantage. Here we're going to back out of our smoke screen and kind of run away because there is a cruise air headed towards us and I don't like that. And I know the U.S. destroyers have strong AP at close range. However, I do not like to get close range to cruisers unless they are totally unaware that I am there, of which this cruiser is not. You can see torpedoes are in the water. We decide to run into an island. We're going to shoot torpedoes here right there and we're going to back up here and see how badly I beached myself well right in the middle of the island so as soon as we can get clear we're gonna speed up and run away again because I think that cruiser is still headed towards my general direction don't be afraid to run away in a destroyer folks I see it all the time people scared to run away and they end up dead okay so we'll send our second rack toward that ship muddling around in our smoke screen and hopefully he does not deviate his direction of travel. We do get smashed from behind. Pretty good there. Thankfully, this isn't a Turkish prison. But we do take that ship out. Three torpedo strikes and a first blood metal. No dev strike? What the heck? Whatever. All right. So 
that's that. There's still another ship over there, the Jervis, at least, if not more. So we're going to circle around the island here and try to maybe hope he pays attention to my teammate instead of me, and then I can light him up and look like a big hero after I sink him to the bottom of the ocean. All right, we do spot another ship. There's the Jervis again. So we are going to light him up. These turrets have really quick rotation if you were using a gunbow commander. You really don't need to use twist and track. In fact, you really don't need to use twist and track past tier 5 in the US destroyers in my opinion. And I would also argue that perceptive is so strong, you shouldn't use twist and track unless your turret versus over 18 seconds. Just the opinion of an average player. Take it for what it's worth. That and a cup of coffee. <laughs> yes, that and a dollar twenty-nine plus tax will get you a cup of coffee. See, I killed my own punchline right there. Look at that. Damn you, Andrew Browweiss or Erweiss or whatever Weiss it was. Edelweiss. Where are all the German serving girls and Durndals bringing me Andrew Browweiss when I need them? By the way, I've never been to Germany. Not that that should cause anyone any particular disappointment, but I would really like to go someday. Thankfully, I was forced vaccinated, so they can't turn me away. All right, here we're backing up. We're going into the Charlie Cap. That way we can shoot over at the Jervis if he dares stick his little nose out. And we can also cap Alpha, which is kind of important when you want to get points here in the Destroyer. As you can see, I can't really afford to do a lot of gunfighting. I'm less than half health. So we're just going to have to hope the ships blunder into these really nice torpedoes. And at the end of the day, um, not this ship, but the Summers. I really think you should play the Summers as a torpedo boat, kids. If you haven't done that before, the damage potential is a lot higher than a gunboat. I just played a great game in the Summers. Whether I put it out this week, I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to after I have recorded this video. I don't think I'm going to put it out this week, but I did get a crack in in the summers, but it just can't compare damage-wise to my previous game using Gleaves and doing more of a torpedo build. Although, I still have the summers in gunboat mode, and I will keep playing it to see if I can approach the level of excellence we had in our match in the torpedo build. All right, there's the Jervis. We're gonna lob some shells out here because I'm hoping to get lucky. And we're gonna uh, motor through this cap. Try to go into Bravo and do more capping stuff because that's what we do. Second destroyer, a Summers is spotted here. That's why I was talking about the Summers because I knew I was gonna fight one later. So you just heard me say it. We're going to fight the Summers later. Don't know when. Don't remember. Can't remember. It's all a haze of uh, triple malted hops and spatzel pasta and, you know, pork schnitzel and all sorts of good stuff right now. So I don't know. We're going to fight the Summers someday. But right now we're going to fight this Jervis one last time. And <laughs> first salvo doesn't do anything. Second salvo doesn't do anything. Third salvo, he turns too much. Sorry, Mr. Jervis, kill number two. Okay, now that we handled that gnat, annoying, buzzing around, we are gonna go into the Bravo cap and try to cap that out. And we see some enemy ships. Although when I see them, I mean, I see their icons. I think that's Richelieu, that might be uh, Iowa. But I'm guessing at those names because, as you know, I've complained that my editing software no longer lets me see these names due to my visual disability. And I feel that not allowing me to zoom in the screen somehow violates the American with Disabilities Act. All right. There is the Summers. We get a couple of hits on him. Uh, he is buzzing around here trying to, trying to fess with us capturing the space. And quite simply, that is not acceptable. Teammate, I, I asked for help from my teammate, but that's purely symbolic. I know he's not going to help me. 
So here we are backing up to get our guns all on target. In doing so, we dodge some Let's torpedoes. We don't leave the cap because that would be dumb and it would reset the cap counter even though it's only at 47 seconds. Here we're looking at our torpedoes. They all appear to have missed except for one. Uh, so that's not too great. Maybe two, two torpedo strikes, but not a whole lot of damage crewing. It doesn't look like we're getting any flooding damage. So I am disappointed. And we're looking for the Summers. We are looking for them because I want to finish them off and prove to you once and for all using geometric logic and skill that the Fletcher is a better gunboat than the Summers. There he is, that rascally rabbit. Trying to sneak around us. We dodged his salvo due to our positioning. For the most part, we dodged it in the water. And we get our turrets lined up. And even though he does a little bit of damage, he cannot keep up with that rate of fire. There it is, proof that the Fletcher is a better gunboat than the Summers. The end. But this video is not yet over. That was kill number three. So now we're going to cap out Bravo. Because that's what you do. And there's only one ship left, and quite frankly, so far away. I can't get there, and I don't care what happens to him. Uh, would that make me an eyeless if I don't care what happens to this other ship? Anyway, I'm not going to get there in time to damage him. So who cares? I'm just going to get this base cap and pretend I am the only reason we won this game. Even though we have like 5 or 6 to 1 lead, because... Our team, like, waffle stomped these dudes because they weren't ready, you know? So we're counting down the seconds here in the Bravo cap. There it is. Solo base cap. We will get some shots out trying to kill Pinch. Oh, but somebody killed him before we could kill him. Such is the story of a kill pincher. Here we are on my favorite screen, the victory screen. <laughs> Just one medal, first blood, only 88,281 damage, three kills, one solo base cap, one assisted base cap, ended up with 375,498 silver and 7014 ship XP and commander XP in the Fletcher. In the Fletcher, you go and you dominate the caps. Look at that. We dominated the scoreboard. 3117 base XP with those three big kills. I'm sorry, in my humble opinion. If your base XP is 3,000 or higher, you had a pretty good game. All right, here is the ship looking at the upgrades. We went with aiming system mod one. I'd recommend that no matter who you use. Propulsion mod two, concealment system mod one, and AA guns mod three. I know you're wondering why I use that. Well, I just don't think you're going to get enough from the torpedo launchers, main battery. If you're running a gumbo commander, yeah, I would use the main battery mod. The Fletcher is fully upgraded. As you can see, we've got two charges of the smoke generator, two charges of the engine boost. We were running that common battle booster for speed. Here in the camouflage, I made my own because at the time this was not available, but now that it is, I see it. My eyes glow red with jealousy. I will have to make a permanent camo later. Early adopter flag, of course. So let's say 15,030 hit points with our build. Five 127 millimeter guns, 11 kilometer range, 3.3 second reload, 5.3 second turn time, and that's with the Torpedo Commander. 1,900 HE shell damage, 5% fire chance. AP shells, 2,200 damage. I think with a high ranking Mordoff, you can get it down to around 2.4 seconds, at least for me, with him at 16.2. So, however you choose to build it. But for now, in this video, I was running for torpedoes. Two quintuple tube launchers reload in 107.4 seconds. Max damage, 16,633. That's less than the summers. 9.6 kilometer range at 59 knots. Detectability, just 1,100 meters. So you got really good torps. AA defense, you can see your main battery is dual purpose. and does count as AA. Maneuverability, 39.9 knots, 560 meter turning circle, three second rudder shift time and concealment. I think it's 5.1. I'm going to guess 5.1 on the surface. I don't know what I'm still talking about here. All right, 5.1 on the surface, 2.8 from the air, 2.6 when firing in smoke. 
I think it was saying maneuverability, you can't get it that fast if you don't use Gleaves. Anyway, here's our Gleaves build. As you can see, that fourth throw skill, destroy or be destroyed. The reason why I use that, it gives you better speed than if you use the Gumbo Commander. And it does have some shell dispersion as a penalty, but you're going to be fighting at close range with the U.S. Destroyers, at least against other Destroyers. And I don't think it really matters that much, which is why I run Destroy or Be Destroyed on any Albert Gleaves build. Anyway, that's my story. No fly zone. I just don't think no fly zone is worth it. Um, look at me now. Again, you're going to lose 100 meters. Concealability, is that worth it for you? Yes, no, maybe. You know, at the end of the day, you have to look at these skills and kind of decide which one is best for you. But in any case, I recommend Destroy or Be Destroyed and Perceptive in row three. You just don't need the church first. Anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. If you like this video, hit that like button and you can always subscribe like 133 people have, which is kind of shocking for more slightly above average ship reviews. Anyway, uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks a lot, everybody.